Hello everyone, this is a Geek Must Have with a tutorial. I'm a technical writer and uh, I just think writing is hard, but I've managed to find a way to make it much easier to do and I'd like to share this with you. This is a Geek Must Have tutorial on how to uh, get a little better at writing by using Markdown especially a thing called ASCII 2 Doctor. And this is the Windows installation to get started. ASCII 2 Doctor? What the hell is this? Well, it's a plain and simple markdown language that helps you focus on the content and the writing first and get away from the GUI interface that tends to distract us technical writers on getting content entered and kind of alleviate the dependency we, we have on what you see is what you get. We get to use our favorite text editor. Technical writers typically use text editors over word processors and just about all, any text editor is supported. And ASCII Doctor will allow you to generate gorgeous looking HTML pages that are ready for the web and PDF files ready for distribution. This is Visual Studio Code, the text editor I prefer, and inside of it is opened an example of an ASCII Doctor document, and it is just a plain text document. Now granted, it does have some special formatting, like these equal signs and the double equal signs, and an indented uh, column here on line number 22. After you run ASCII Doctor 2 on this file, it will create an HTML file that is a very nicely formatted web page. There are some cautions here. You're going to need some basic skills using the Windows Terminal, which now is known as PowerShell. The ASCII 2 Doctor software has to be installed manually, and we will show you how to do that in this tutorial. You need to have some good skills using a text editor, and that's probably a little easier than using a word processor. And if it's my belief you want to be better at writing, you have to be willing to learn something new, and ASCII 2 Doctor may just be one of the items in your toolkit. I realize this might sound kind of magical, but it really is a simple tool chain to help you get more productive in doing technical writing. Give me an example. Starts with John the Tech Writer. That's me. I use my favorite text editor, which right now is Microsoft.code. I write an ASCII Doctor file, which has an ADOC extension on it with special formatting. I then open up a copy of PowerShell. I run the ASCII 2 Doctor command, which generates an HTML file that I can then either view with a browser or send to a website to be shared. I can also open up a PowerShell and run ASCII 2 Doctor to PDF, which generates a PDF file. And PDF files are widely accepted as one of the most transferable and exchangeable files between people. In this video, we'll cover the Windows installation of ASCII 2 Doctor and ASCII 2 Doctor PDF. Both of these programs are written in Ruby, so we're going to have to install Ruby, and the program for that is Ruby Installer for Windows. It's a website. You go to it, and it downloads everything for you, including a copy of GEM, which is the package manager for Ruby that helps you install packages like ASCII 2. If you use the Ruby Installer for Windows, GEM gets installed automatically. Then we'll do the GEM installation for ASCII 2 Doctor and the GEM installation for ASCII 2 Doctor PDF. After you get ASCII 2 Doctor installed, you're probably going to want to get started using it. And this video is not the place where we're going to go over how to use it. There will be videos in the future outlining how to go do that. But I will give you some links here on great starter places to get started with. And I'll put copies of those links in the description below. Power Man has the best basic introduction to ASCII 2 Doctor syntax. Side-by-side -side comparison of if you type this, this is what you see. Awesome ASCII 2 Doctor Notebook. 
It is a free ebook that you can download from MR Hackey, and his website has a bunch of tips and techniques for anywhere from intermediate to advanced usage. The ASCII 2 Doctor Syntax Quick Reference Guide, Noobs to Gurus. This gets you to the point where you're competent with being able to use the markdown language and the markdown syntax of ASCII 2 Doctor. And the last one I recommend is the ASCII 2 Doctor Writer's Guide Step by Step. If you're a technical writer, this helps you get started putting together documents and templates. There is one link I would suggest you stay away from, and that's the ASCII 2 User's Manual. The full User's Manual is extremely technical and was written for those people who are going to take ASCII 2 Doctor and do more than just what a simple technical writer would do. Let's get started doing the install. We will get started uh, installing Ruby and we're going to verify first that Ruby isn't already installed on our system and we're going to open up a copy of PowerShell to do that. So to do it you press the Windows key and the R key simultaneously and the run window will pop up into there you're going to ask it to open PowerShell. And when you click on the OK button, the PowerShell opens up and shows you your home directory. Now this is also known as the Windows Terminal. We're going to ask it to tell us what the current version of Ruby is. And it comes back and says Ruby is not recognized. And this helps confirm that we don't have Ruby already installed. We need to install Ruby and we'll use the website Ruby Installer for Windows. And we'll open up a browser and I'm using Chrome. And we'll type in And the first item at the top of the list is the installer for Windows. And it says it's the easy way to install Ruby on Windows. And this is very true. So we'll download it. And I'm going to pick the 64-bit version. And this happens to be the current version of Ruby. As time goes on, this changes. And it is being downloaded to my system. There are some corporate environments that aren't going to allow you to execute this and you'll need to get special privileges. In my environment, I don't need to have special privileges. So I'm going to execute this. And it opens up, and it opens up the Ruby installation guide. You should accept the license, go to next, use the default directory that it provides you. Make certain that you have add Ruby executables to your path. This will make this much easier to use in the future. Click on install and it will go through the install process. When it has completed, you will get this completion message that mentions that it's been set up. And there is a checkbox right here. And I'm going to give you a caution. You're not a Ruby developer. You're most likely a technical writer. And if you are, uncheck this. You don't need to have all the extra things that installs. And it doesn't make your technical writing any easier. So we'll click on the finish. And we're back at the Ruby installer download page. So we'll reopen our Windows PowerShell and see what version of Ruby has been installed. And it comes back and says Ruby 2.4.1, etc., 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 has been installed. In the overview notes, I mentioned that if you use the Ruby installer for Windows website, it automatically downloads a copy of GEM, the package manager that you're going to need to install Ruby packages. Let's verify that GEM has been installed.
and there's the gem version 2.6.11. We've successfully completed installing Ruby and gem. The next part of our ASCII 2 Doctor install is to actually install ASCII 2 Doctor. We'll do that by using the PowerShell command and we'll reopen our PowerShell and we'll type in the command to install ASCII 2 Doctor. This isn't that complicated. On some systems, it is liable to have a security alert asking you, is it okay for uh, this process to go and talk outside? Say, allow access. In the meantime, the ASCII 2 doctor has been installed. And we're going to verify that it's been installed. by just typing in ASCII doctor. And it brings back a list of the commands that are available for ASCII doctor. This verifies that it's been installed. I think it would be a good idea for us to verify that the ASCII 2 doctor has installed properly. And the easiest way for us to do that is to create an ADOC file and run it. Um, as a matter of habit, I always do all of my editing of documents in my documents directory. So I'm going to change to that first. And now I'm going to see if I have any ADOC files out there. And I don't. We're going to open up Notepad from within PowerShell to enter one. And we'll key in a very quick file. All right, so we've created a very short ASCII doctor file, and we need to save it with an extension of ADOC. So we're going to save it into my documents directory and we'll call it intro adoc. Now it's important in notepad that you change the extension that says save as type here to all files or notepad will add a dot text at the end of it. And we'll save it. We'll minimize our notepad and now we'll see if that file is out there. And there it is. Now, we want to use the ASCII 2 doctor to generate an HTML file. That's done with the following command. This will read the current directory, read all the ADOC files, and generate an HTML file for each one of them. That seemed kind of quick. Let's verify that it did it. It should be an HTML file. And it is. The easiest way to view this HTML file immediately is by typing in its name. There is a little thing with PowerShell where you have to type in a period and a slash first, then the name of the file. And when you key that in, an editor will open up and there is your document. From that small little text file, it generated this web page. The last thing for us to do in this ASCII 2 installation for Windows is to install the PDF generator for ASCII 2 Doctor. And that's done using the GEM package installer.
the pre that you see on the end is necessary because the PDF module from GEM is still in pre-production. And one of the things GEM does is if it notices it needs dependencies, it goes and installs those automatically for you. So here it is going on its merry way, getting everything that, PD, uh, that the ASCII 2 Dr. PDF needs. The installation has completed. And the way to verify that it's actually been completed is by typing them in the name of the command. And there it is, it returns the ASCII 2 doctor dash PDF. And let's see if we have any PDF files out in our directory. No, we don't. So let's take that intro file we created earlier and generate the ASCII 2 PDF file. Let's generate the PDF file for it. This command will generate a PDF file for every file in our directory that has an ADOC extension on it. This takes a little longer. Let's see what got generated. Let's see if there's a PDF file. And there it is. And let's open it up. My system has been configured to open uh, PDF files up in a browser. Your system might be different, but when I click on it and execute it, it opens up a browser. And here is my PDF file. There's a nice heading page. There's an introduction with my welcome paragraph and done so far. Not a very large document, but great just to prove that the PDF portion of this is working. This is the end of the Windows installation of the basic components to start using the ASCII Doctor Markdown language to possibly make your technical rating go easier. There will be additional videos following up this one here to go into a little more detail as to syntax and hints and tips I have discovered over time to make my use of ASCII Doctor easier. We'll also go over an extended tool chain with some other goodies in it to make the process of doing the writing and the publishing much simpler.